I have completed A-level graphics! I got an A-star, 100%, which I'm really proud of so I thought I'd show you my work. I've also made a video showing my A-level fine artwork, which I also got 100% in, where you can see things like this and this, and I will link that at the end of the video, but watch this first. And if you've just come from my art video and you want to see what I'm doing in graphics, hello, how are you doing? <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so unit one, this is worth 60% of my grade and we started off by just trying to find letters in things that we could find out and about in college and then I did a bit about anthropomorphism which is when animals are given human characteristics, a page about that and then I decided to make my own anthropomorphic characters, I like the anteater is, is my favourite uh, I did these in watercolour and then there are all my doodles and sketches for them and then I just picked my favourite and did them in watercolour and then I did some photoshop. I'm not very great at photoshop, I'm not gonna lie, I only know the basics. So I did my best with what I could do by just slapping faces on things with hoods. A tiny bit about typography, um, but if I'm being honest, typography is not my most favourite of things. And then I went on to illustration, which is my favourite thing and I knew that I wanted to do that for the main project. So a big mind map about all the things I could do with illustration, but I knew I wanted to focus mainly on children's books and children's illustrations. So Here's a page full of various children's authors and illustrators. From that, I chose my favourite, Oliver Jeffers. I think he is amazing. So it's a page about all of his work, a bit about his inspirations, similar artists. I did a little drawing of his work. Onto formal elements where I took one of his pieces and you have to write about the composition, the colour, the context, things like that, the style. We went to Manchester Uni. I had a look at their art show, a little page about that. I can't really remember why I did this, I did some characters, it was a while ago this. Some doodles, did these in watercolour again. Sorry if it seems like I'm talking really fast, there's just a lot to get through and I don't really want this video to drag on for too long. So sorry if I'm speaking extremely quick. Um, taking inspiration from Oliver Jeffers, I decided to do a landscape painting in acrylic, but in his style using the same colours as the picture I looked at for the formal elements and I'm really proud of this actually. There's a video of me painting this, yeah, if you're interested. And then I thought I'd have a go at trying to make a little story, a little illustration. I was very new to digital art at the time so it is quite simple but I was just dipping my toes in having a go about this kid jumping in a puddle. My second artist, Charles M. Schmutz, he's the guy who does the peanuts um, comics and animations. I wanted to, I chose to do him because I knew I wanted to give animation a go so he was a good artist to choose for that. So here's just a mind map of all the ideas of things I could do relating to the artist. And then I took pictures of people in my class and I turned them into Peanuts characters. And I also <laughs> drew my rabbit as a Peanut character. From that I decided I would make my own version of the Peanuts comic but call it Cashew Nuts, which is quite smart I thought. There you go, that's that. I just copied the same layout as a comic that uh, my, the artist had done. I did it all digitally on the computer. I would draw everything on paper first and then scan it into the computer and colour it there. After that I did an animation. Here it is. There you go, that was my animation. So after all that artist research and responses to the artist's work, we finally moved on to our final pieces and coming up with ideas for that. So here's just a big mind map about what I wanted to do with my final piece. And I knew I wanted to create a children's book, so here's a storyboard for an idea I came up with for my book. I came up with a book called The Train to Snoozeville, and these are the two characters. It's a daughter and her dad. Uh, the girl's called Izzy, the dad does not have a name, <laughs> he's just called dad. And this is a bit of my mock piece, uh, coming up with like a colour scheme and a style that I do it all in. I did it all digitally, but I would draw things on paper first, like the uh, Peanuts comic, I draw it on paper first, scan it in and drew, like colour it all in Photoshop. So here's just a few drawings of the characters in different poses, and then I moved on to the actual pages. 
the book itself is about this girl who doesn't want to go to bed and she, she keeps saying that she's not tired but she really is so the train to snoozeville comes on by which is like this magical train and it takes her on a journey through all the different stops of um, be the bedtime routine so there's tooth town where you brush your teeth story station where you get your bedtime story read drama junction um sleep city things like that but for my actual final piece i only managed to get i think six of the pages done just because it was a lot of work so all these pages that you're seeing now is just the process of coming up with the pages and showing all the progress shots of me drawing it. I also wanted the book to have a few pop-up elements because children will find it more entertaining to read if there's like interactive parts in the book. A bit on typography and then I did a front cover. And the rest of the sketchbook is just showing the pages of the book I made. Um, so here's the book, written and illustrated by Emily Schofield, that's me. <laughs> Um, you know what, I'll read you a bit, I won't read you the whole thing because you can just pause the video if you want to read it. Um, here you go. It was getting late but not for Izzy, she was keeping herself very busy, she loves playing games with her toys and Teddy doll that gold up, are you ready? <laughs> you saw the whole book rhymes, uh, it took me ages to write, uh, remember me and my mum and my dad were all having like a brainstorming session to figure it all out, uh, but I am really really proud of it and I'm kind of uh, gutted that I didn't get to do the whole book, but that would have taken me literally like a year to do the whole book oh and look look oh it stands up oh beautiful <laughs> like i said in the beginning this whole section that i just showed you then was worth 60 uh, percent and this what i'm showing you now is 40 percent and this is the exam unit where we get given an exam paper and you choose one of the things to do and i chose to do mine on the properties and qualities of paper so what you just saw then was a mind map and then i decided that i wanted to go more in detail on recycling and using paper instead of plastic and that eventually went into plastic in the ocean and the next couple of pages are me just messing about with paper seeing what i can do with it i made this there's a video of me making this if you're interested. A uh, little paper illustration and some swirls and cutouts. Yeah, so just messing about with paper and seeing what I can create, some collaging. Just exploring the properties and qualities of paper, which is what the exam uh, question was asking me to do. A little bit of Photoshop as well, but you know, like I said, my Photoshop skills are quite limited. <laughs> my first artist, Helen Musselwhite, she works mainly in paper and her work is amazing. Uh, so a page about her, her work, her inspiration, similar artists, some formal elements, colour and composition, all that sort of stuff. Um, reflect and direct, so I take, took one of Helen Musselwhite's work and I thought, how can I adapt that and make it into my own, taking inspiration from it. So I wanted to link it in with the whole plastic um, pollution and all that. So I created a landfill out of paper but there was two layers so the top layer was a nice pretty forest but underneath it there was a landfill showing how you know the plastic is destroying the land because plastic takes like 300 years to fully decompose um, all that sort of stuff. So here's the paper illustration. I don't have the top layer but um, you get the gist. And I used the little uh, foam pads to create depth between the layers uh, second artist, Brittany Lee. Honestly, she is amazing, Brittany Lee. She's a Pixar artist. I recommend you look at her work because it's stunning. And then I decided I want to look, wanted to look more in plastic in the ocean because that's a really big issue. So a page about that. This is a work by Brittany Lee and I thought, oh, that's quite good. It could link in with my theme, but I wanted to sort of twist it so it linked in with the plastic. So instead of the fish being all happy and having a good time, I thought I'd have them surrounding in plastic, surrounded in plastic, showing how it's, you know, sort of destroying the ocean. So in the illustration, there's a turtle with um, like a net wrapped around its fin and a fish stuck in like, you know, can holders and it's plastic bags where all the jellyfish are. So here that is, and all them pages then were just like planning and leading up to it, and here it is. Honestly, I'm really proud of this, but it took me ages. I did that in watercolour and obviously cut everything out and used the foam pads to create depth in the piece. And after that, moving on to our final piece, so this is a big brainstorm, coming up with all the ideas and things which I wanted to do for my final piece, and I went in a completely different direction. I ended up doing like a 3D sort of sculpture, which I turned into a poster. I created a headpiece out of paper, sort of like a mohawk, which was inspired by the ocean. The paper was the ocean, and then I filled it with bits of plastic, obviously showing how plastics is drawing the ocean. So all these pages now are just leading up to it and all the different elements are used. So I created a stencil 
and this page is all about different coral designs and how I could make paper look like coral. I came up with that there and I ended up using that on my final piece. I also got myself some spray paint, some blue, different shades of blue spray paint and I wanted to create a poster sort of inspired by Vogue but instead of obviously fashion being on the front the writing was about um, facts about plastic in the ocean and that's like my mock piece and my plan for the exam you have it's a 15 hour exam five hours each day you have three days a bit on typography I decided instead of having Vogue at the top of the poster I would have the word think and on the right I'm using uh, like different colours and different fonts lowercase and uppercase seeing what looks good together and plastic experiments I gathered a bunch of different plastics and I, I messed about with them like um, doing a bit of sewing into them and then burning them and seeing what would happen and then all this is things that I did in the exam the poster like you take screenshots in the exam and you have to record it in your book afterwards and finally my exploded evaluation where you just write about your final piece and here are some pictures of it I do have the final piece with me but it's kind of got a bit squished and it's not really looking its best so this will have to do and here's my dad wearing it looking mightily handsome but like I said it got a bit squished so it's not looking its best and this is a poster that I made where my headpiece is being modelled by my very lovely friend but there you go that's everything that's what I did in my second year of A-level graphics I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see what I've done in A-level art, hop on over, click on the thing, the video says, just, just click on it, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, goodbye.